What's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of the r r Express podcast. For all you speed freaks and track and field fiends, today yes, sir. Is, a, is a very, very special. It's going to be a hell of a podcast. It is going to be our finest to date. Three episodes in, our finest to date. You know, don't put so much pressure on it, man. You know what? No, because you know what? Look, this is all, this is... This is going to be a love fest. Nah, this, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. Because, hey, I got brought out the Guayavera, the Taino. <laughs> we got the flag in the back. You we got know the exactly. flag in the background. You know exactly who we're talking about. The second Puerto Rican to win gold at the Olympics. Not only is she, oh, man. Not only is she a gold medal winner, but she's also now an Olympic record holder. Jazz, you ready? Camacho Quinn. Hit you ready? it. You Go ready? ahead. Go ahead, man. Come on, my. <laughs> Yo, it had to be played, man. You already know the party's going to come out. Yes. We so shout it. out to Jasmine Camacho Quinn, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know how bad I am. Um, have you seen have you seen the videos? Have you seen the the, the, the reaction videos on online? Oh yeah, man. Oh that. my goodness. I'll tell you what, man, I was getting emotional did watching you, them. Did you see the one one in the streets? I um which one? Because I saw a few. I, I think it was that it was at, at I mean, obviously it was at night, but not, it was just a whole bunch of people and then she won and they went nuts. Did you see our family, yo? I didn't see I didn't see the one with her family. Damn, yo. Oh man, this is gonna be emotional. Yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be good. And I mean, like, this, this is gonna be a good one, man. We're gonna be able, we're gonna be talking about some where when we get when we we will get we're gonna save that for last. Yes, know, very much. We're not gonna start out hot yet, but nah. But I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to get to. There's a lot to talk about. There is yeah. some great track and field over the last couple of days that we want to catch up on, and we are going to start at one of the most incredible performances and by an unknown in one of the most what the pop probably the popular race at the at the olympics the men's 100 meter dash marcel jacobs representing italy you talk about throwing a ball from left field yo whoa whoa like i, I did not expect that Whoa, I and you know, I, I I keep watching the race, and I mean he's he's not tech like he's not an ordinary runner. Like if you could look at him and look at everybody right. else, he's it's different, yo. Know? He it's looks not he looks like a football player. He looks like a football, he like a bobsledder, like something oh, like that. Right, right, right. Very yeah, that's what yeah, he looks like. like. He's very like, stiff and yeah. To me, that's like that's like a power runner, yo. Like he's a yes, yes. Runner. It's all strength. It's all like, <laughs> man. I wonder. I wonder what he squats. A whole bunch of lots, <laughs> a lot, <laughs> lots of plates, lot, lots of plates. And how, you know, he, he's. I mean, oh, it, and yo, that was that was from left field. You know the 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 and here's the other thing. What like one of one of like the subplots of this. Of the final, we'll just start at the final. Work our way yeah. back. Is um, the um, uh, the guy from Great Britain who false started? False started. In, oh my goodness! In his, in, in, at the great, at, at, you know, to, to qualify for the Olympics. Oh they my put goodness! Him, and they put him on the team, and he false starts in the final. Yo, I know what that feels like. Ooh. I false started my first four by one race. As a freshman on varsity, on varsity, and it, yo, it, I cried. And Diaz looked at me like, "What, what are you crying for?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yo, I, yeah, now, I know that hurt, man. That had to hurt. And you did it at a final of an Olympics, and you were one of the favorites. Yeah, and you like your country put you on the team. Oh man, I like man, I feel that's I, tough, I feel man. Free. And then." What was it? Uh, his 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 teammate? What in the semis or in the um, in the prelims? Also false started. Also false started. Oh yo, 
That must stop. That plane ride home must. But to be honest, I don't. Not really. Any of the big countries really are having a great Olympics, man. Because U.S. really is not. U.S. is not also having a great Olympics. Well, track and field. What there's a the bright spot for for the Americans in 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 this final was a homeboy that came in third Uh, place. Was he came in second? Curly. Yeah, uh, Curly came came from for the four for for the four hundred down. down. And they were trying to convince him not to run. And let me let, not so, run hundred. Like explain how like how drastic of a change is that coming oh. from the four hundred down, especially at that elite at that elite level. We're talking about pace. Mm-hmm. It's not the same pace, man. It's you mental a hundred. I mean, the four hundred is is definitely a race plan. Like you got to have a race plan, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the hundred is more of going through the motions. Right, going through kind of going through the motions, uh, block clearance, drive phase, uh, max speed, deceleration. Right, so those are basically you get in your head and you're going. The 400 is is tricky because this game is, is, is race planned, right? Um, but then you have to adjust mm-hmm. at certain places if you're not feeling right. Or once again, we talk about mental if you're running somebody else's game plan or your game plan just not tying up to what you were supposed to do. So it's mm-hmm. it's, it's two different things. Um, when 100, I'm not saying you go, you go from zero to 100, right? You go from zero to 100. And the 400, you go from zero to like 80. Mm-hmm. And then you're maintaining that 80. You're really clearly not at 100 in a 400 at all. You know, it's more of a, of a pace race. Um, and, and really good game plan. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's totally different. It's, it's very drastic. You don't see many 400 meter runners come from the 400 down. Um, Al, I mean, Allison, Alice, but Allison also started at the hundred and went and up. And then she went up, right, correct. Um, and then you have Sharika. Sharika took third in a mm-hmm. hundred. Um, you just like, you, you, you just don't see it. You don't see a Michael Johnson stopping and coming down. Um, mm. Bolt was another one. Bolt, man, Bolt started off 400, ended up at the 100. Um, but I do say like a lot of key, a, a lot of key sprinters or historic sprinters um, ran fours. Mm-hmm. Um, they ran mm-hmm. the fours. Um, uh, let's, for instance, uh, Tyson Gay, 969. What's this mm. 400? This 400 is maybe 40. I think 44 five. Um, Damn. So, you know, like uh, even uh, Wade Van Niekirk that didn't make it, he dropped down. I think he ran 9-9 and went back up and ran, broke the world record. So to mm. me, a lot of the key, a lot of the key times in history always lead to the 400, always. Um, that is fascinating. Because when I think about it, when you're talking about drive phase, you're talking about technique, you're, you know, every, the, the, the the things that have to, you have to be on point with to run and be successful at a, at a 100. Yeah. Um, I would, I would think that a, a one, a 400 meter sprinter, if they get out, if they, if, if they have good starts, wouldn't they gradually get stronger down the down yeah. straight away? If you see how late Sharika came in, right? She didn't have a good start, didn't have a good thing. But if you roll that tape back, you, you can see how fast she was gaining probably after 60. If mm-hmm. she had a better start, we, we might be talking about a different race here. Mm-hmm. Um, Fred Curley, you see Fred Curley, you see Fred Curley is not explosive, but he's powerful. And a lot of his strides are very meaningful. Um, and he doesn't pick up to after the 60. So, right, right, um, right, right. You know, it, it's, it's, I mean, now the 400 is getting more technical where you do need to start. If you look at a Michael Norman, Michael Norman, um, he basically is in a dry phase when he comes out. Um, Alice Felix sometimes does it. Um, Sonia Richards used to do it. So, you know, like it, it is, it's very similar, but it's just, it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard to drop down. It's interesting because I'm 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 rewatching the race and you could almost see at the start that Curly has a bit of a false step. He kind of steps to the side. Yeah, steps to the side. So that's and that's technical, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm, I don't know his coach, but at the same time, a 400 really don't need as good as the start 
Yeah. Then there's a hundred. And then the other so, thing is you're starting on a turn and we're starting to turn is it is, is, yeah. is different balance. You know, it's, 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 I mean, it's a, it's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a lot, man. It's a but lot. It, he did run an impressive race. You know, really? In second. Yeah. I mean, he, he might be, he might go down and, and he, as he'll go down underrated, but he might be one of the greatest printers. It's a lot. It's a lot to think about. And it's, it's really amazing at what he did, man. He's, and I think he ran 43 in a 400. So look at yeah. that. And he's coming back for the 400, right? It's, no, he's not. He tried to double in the one, too. So he's just running the one. Oh, but okay. I, I'm watching the internet, and a lot of people are thinking he might run a four by four. I mean, why not? You know? What are some of the disappointments that you have um, of this, just this overall, um, the 100 event at these Olympics? Um. I think the U.S. was just a disappointment, except mm -hmm. Curly at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, Christian Coleman gone because of his uh, CDC, I mean, CDC, um, USADA violations. Mm -hmm. um, and then Noah Lyles didn't make the, the 100. Um, and then Bromel coming here and not doing anything with having the fastest time in the world. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can go on and on. Even Ron, I mean, not Ronnie Baker wasn't a big disappointment. He did make a final, um, but that was like, I mean, a lot of people thought that he would be up there or even win it at this point because of how well he was running before the Olympics. Because he mm -hmm. beat Bromel. He beat Bromel. He gave Bromel his first um, loss this year. So, yeah, I mean, I'm very surprised in the uh, Japanese in a, in a, in a, in a hundred um, Nigerians. Watch out for their four by one. Mm hmm. Yeah, that uh, uh, Enoch. Yeah. Okay. Pull, he pulled up. He pulled up. He pulled up. So, I mean, <clears throat> if he's all right, maybe it was a cramp. I know it's hot out there. Yeah. Come back, oh, they might have a good four by one. Um, but my, my disappointment is, is, is the U.S., man. They, 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 uh, they did it again. Yeah. Man. Hey, man. Well, <clears throat> we still got the, uh, we still got the relays and, I mean, we always have a problem with the stick, so yeah, that's that's always an interesting watch. Whether or not they finish, because they what they 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 <laughs> they had a they had a bad exchange in the in the mixed uh, relay, right? So no, they didn't have a bad exchange. So um, I had to go look at it because somebody asked me, you know, what happened to the mixed relay four by four? Um, so one of the officials were giving re giving the teams oh, the wrong place where to line up. Mm -hmm. And they gave them a wrong place. If you look at the video, she's like a hedge of everybody. Like she's not even in the zone. Like you can't even see her in the video. Oh. So, so they they was they had disqualified her, and they protested that that's what they were given. So they went back and they found that another team, two other teams, also were told the same thing. So they reinstated them. Yeah. Oops. So. I mean, that was going, that was also a disappointment. I mean, I, they, they should have yeah, won. Poland won, right? Yeah, Poland won. They should have won that easily, without a doubt. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, was, I guess everybody's having a year off because, what was that, a couple of weeks ago? It was at, at, some, at some diamond event that, uh, was it in France or Spain? I don't, I, 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 I can't remember where it was, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> it's, the second to last lap in the steeplechase. Oh, they gave him an extra lap, so I like that, right? No, oh, no, dude, dude. Uh, uh, um, the official rang the bell two laps early, and so dude was out. <laughs> he's out, and he's like, "Oh my god!" And you, you hear the the commentators, the announcers, like, "Oh my god, he's out on a full sprint, and he has uh, he has a lap and a half to go." Oh no. That's not the first one. I know. I know they they've done it again in another Diamond League, I believe. Oof. So now they they did it twice. So I mean, everybody's oh. having an off year. It's just I don't know what it is, man. Like I don't know what it is. Well, congratulations to Lamont Marcel Jacobs for running. Yeah, man, shout out to you, man. A nine point eight zero. Wow. Nine point eight zero. 
that was very shocking. Even though I saw a lot of uh, um, videos of him in his makeshift air tunnel. You ever saw that? No, I haven't. Yeah, I'd look up. See, I don't, let me see if I can get it up and send it to you. Yeah, they got like him in his makeshift, like he's running. It's like a, it's a pickup truck and then it's like this makeshift tunnel. Mm-hmm. And he runs as the truck goes with the tunnel inside of the tunnel. And like, like they're recording everything he's doing. Like some scientific thing. I have to see it because I guess what mm-hmm. it's 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 the the pickup truck is developing a draft or something or or uh, it's it's, it's I'm developing not too sure headwind kind of, or something. I'm not too sure what they were doing, but that was like the one of the videos is going around in the comments and things like that. Sounds funky. You see, right. I don't know if I can find it. And so, men's track and field, we have. Lamont, Marcel Jacobs, Gold, Fred Curley, shout out to the 400 runners coming down, representing. Yeah, man. And Silver and Andre DeGrasse in third place. That was funny. Did you see the after the race? I I, I saw a little bit of it, but I I, I guess I was watching. (laughs) What happened? The Chinese guy was like, grabbed the flag and was running around also like he took third. I was so confused. I was like, didn't DeGrasse come to third? And I'm looking, and the Chinese guys was running around with the flag. Oh, on. It's like, right. Oh, yeah, like, you know what? I thought, so. I, I thought, because I saw <laughs> I saw one of my friends, um, I saw one of my friends post on Facebook. He was like, you know, at a, a Chinese man ran 989 in the 100. Times have changed. And so when I saw the race, and I'm like, I guess that's why he's went running around. But then, I but see he didn't. But he didn't run nine eight nine. He ran nine nine eight. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was so just I, confused about this. All right. Well, hey, you know, he, 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 if you wanted, I, but then Rick, he didn't even come in the top four. <laughs> that, that, that's why. That's why I was trying to like. <laughs> Yo, why is he like? Why is he doing a victory lap? What was going on here? Like, I know. Did, I'm like, did he take? Did, did he take third or second? Let me let me look back. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, Yo, he took dead last. He's, yeah, yeah. You had a D, D, you had a DQ and a DNF, and he was, yeah. He probably would have. I I don't know what he was thinking. But hey, man, you get excited. You got the Olympics. Get excited. Do what you got to do. I mean, I I guess. I mean, I would have got I would have got excited too. I would have took the American or uh, Puerto Rican flag, and <laughs> you're gonna have to take me off this track. Yeah, well, you know what? Then he's like, hey, man, you came in sixth place. That's right. That means that's me. That means Give me only, my participation medal, please. He's like, only five people beat me. In the world. In the world. <laughs> in the world, Craig. In the world. In the world. Not the city, the world. So about the world. Damn right, I'm going to take my victory lap. Oh, my God. Can you say that? No, you can't say this. <laughs> Let me take my victory lap. Yeah, right. Wait, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. All this oh, hard man. work. You're going to make me take this victory lap. You're going to give it to me. Let's move on to the field where we had one cracking long jump final. Will it be, yeah, our last night? It was very compelling to watch. Um, we had, had Javon Harrison yeah, it's came fifth. in fifth. Um, it was all very, very entertaining to watch. Yeah. At least in the top, the, the top sure. six. Nah, I'll probably go back and watch it. Yeah, the top six was. Um, I mean, you had some, you had some really good jumps. You had some close calls. The Cubans came out. <clears throat> yeah, first Juan Miguel Ataveria, and, and he's, uh, he's one of the favorites. Yeah, Juan Ma, Juan Miguel Ataveria and um, uh, Mikel Maso. Maso. Mm-hmm. They came out like gangbusters. They. I think they they jumped their their I, like they led from the beginning. <clears throat> Shout out to Cuba, man. Good yeah, look, Echeverria looks like a light skinned um, Araldis Chapman. I was like, he like, oh okay, I see it, I see it. Oh man, he um, 
I, I see a lot of videos of him trying, um, like almost jumping out of pits. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's young he, too, I believe. He was moving. He, he really like my soul. My soul. Yo, he does look like. Early <laughs> Yo, he does. He started out. Um, no, I think my soul set the tone. He jumped a eight twenty one, right? Mm. Really, just really set the tone. Then, like right behind him was uh, Tentaglu, the 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 Greek, right? And then Miguel Echeverria came out, and there was that, that was your one two three coming out of the first heat. I mean, the first flight. Then I, you know. Javon, man, he he was struggling all all day. He was struggling all day. He just looked like he was oh, he man. was he was short stepping the board. He was mm-hmm. chopping his feet at the end. You yeah, know, Javon jump is difficult, yo. Oh, dude, he, I didn't realize how difficult it was. I don't. I, I probably tried it once in in freshman year. And it's just that that whole counting steps and maybe everything got to be perfect, man. Everything that's, that's has the thing. to be perfect. Like your run up strides, everything got to be perfect. Yeah, oh, man. So and lucky. it was, but no, I mean, like, just he, he looked like he was having a rough day his first couple, and then finally he he was able to like he was a he was able to break eight. So uh-huh. his best his best jump was eight fifteen, and then right after him, Tataglu jumped eight fifteen, right. So he tied him. So that that put Javon in, in in fourth place. So what ended up happening, and by by the third attempt, Juan Miguel really set the tone. He jumped eight forty one, right. Really put himself out there. Maso ended up um, not attempting his last four jumps. He went to sit down on the bench and he pulled out an ace bandage and you see him wrapping his leg, mm. right? You know, you see how the competition is playing out. So, like, it probably gets you – the A21 probably gets you on the medal stand. But he, it looked like he hurt himself. So he mm-hmm. didn't go. He didn't attempt. And then his fourth jump, Juan Miguel, he, he, he pulled up. And so he didn't attempt his fifth jump. In his last attempt, Tantangalu goes ahead and ties Echevarria, right? And since he had, since he had a, a longer jump prior to that, he won gold on his last jump. It was insane. I don't know if that made any sense. No, I did. I was just looking at the rules because they both jump 841 so it doesn't go into a jump it doesn't go into a jump off no like how something hot jump would be what they do is they take your second best jump i mean second best jump yeah okay, so, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah so since they were tied at eight, i just read third that's why i was asking you i thought it was third it says third um because hey, break a tie should place in a long jump triple if after the tie remains a higher place is awarded to the tied competitor whose third best performance is better than the third best performer of any tie. So I guess they changed it and made it to second best attempt. Yeah, because that's how they were explaining it when yeah. Javon when okay. when <clears throat> Tatangalu tied uh Got Javon it. Harris. Uh-huh. So, and then and all of bo- that's 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 funny though, but they both they both didn't attempt their second attempt. Yeah, because they both got hurt. Mm. Maso mm-hmm. got hurt after his second jump. Um, Echevidia got hurt on his fourth jump. The long jump was uh, was was an awesome awesome watch. Um, you know, the top guy in the world won. Metalis. Mitialdis, Mitialdis Tatanglu. Good for him. One on his last jump. It's unfortunate that the, the two Cubans got hurt early because, mm. you know. They make Cuba but, proud, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing to be ashamed 
So staying on the infield, um, we have American Raven Saunders placing third in women's shot put. Yeah. And one of the big things that a lot of people were talking about and seeing whether or not what will happen. Um, I just want to ask you, it, what, what's your opinion on just athletes in this situation displaying uh, protest, displaying a solidarity towards uh, a, a group of some sort? Um, man, Ooh. young Ronald wouldn't care. Young Ronald wouldn't care because young Ronald was naive. Um, young Ronald had that, you know, mindset. It just wanted to run. Um, but as Ronald grew into a man, he had to understand exactly what type of man he is. And I mean, you can't, I can't hide my skin color. So, you know, um, Man, this is a tough one. Um, I mean, go, I think this, this also is going to tie into what we talk about, Jasmine. Um, for me, growing up as an African American and Hispanic, right, it was tough trying to fit in to groups. Like it, it was, it was really tough. Um, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't dark skinned enough because uh, I, I wasn't black because I wasn't dark skinned enough for. Um, I couldn't, I wasn't Puerto Rican because I couldn't speak Spanish. Um, and I didn't look like anybody else. Um, so it's, it's tough, man. It's, it's, it's tough. Um, because then you have, you don't want your metal to be taken away from you, but then you have to really ask yourself, but what's more important? Um, so old Durana would speak up. Um, I'm, I'm a, you know, I've, I've been a teacher also. Um, so, you know, I taught eighth, I taught eighth graders. Um, and I was at a point where I was teaching at that time where I was, um, uh, when, um, Michael Brown got shot. Um, this was in Yonkers. So, you know, um, we had, you know, urban kids, man, that at the, you know, they're also being targeted, um, for these things, you know, um, Man, and, 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 and as you grow up, you start to like understand who exactly who you are um, when you ask certain questions like, how old were you when the cops pulled their gun on you? You know? Um, so for me, it would have been important if I would have gotten that podium and stood up and displayed um, what I'm going through every single day. Um, so, that's more important to me. Like, I don't care about a medal. Um, I want my kids to, you know, see their fathers um, having a voice um, and being understood at the same time. So, you know, it's, it's, it, I think it's just, you gotta really think it wasn't more important to you and the more important to me was, would be standing up. My opinion is everybody has the answers for themselves, right? You know, like you're saying, you know, like you feel, you know, you feel like you would have to, and everybody has to do what they have to do, what they have to, what what, what feels right to them. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it, it's like I, I, I know I wouldn't do it because it's funny that you talk about growing up and not being, you know, you know, black enough, you know, not being Puerto Rican enough. I mean. <clears throat> You know, I growing up being called white boy, I mean, whatever, not being Puerto yeah. Rican, not being in, not not speaking Spanish. And what's funny is when I was growing up, I actually um, I actually got scared out of speaking Spanish. Like I say, anytime I would I would I would talk, I would try to wow. speak Spanish. That you know, it would you know, I would be made fun of. And fun of, uh -huh, or, and, or, and, or um, and it, you know. it, it it's it's. You know, and even to this day, like I'll I'll try, but it's just there's just the version that like, you know, I just don't want to sound stupid. And um and one of the things why I wouldn't like display any because there's 
you talked about your young self. Um, and, you know, for me, dealing with that, and especially growing up in the Bronx, mm -hmm. at the time that we grew up. And where we know, grew up. And it was, it, 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 it was difficult. And luckily, you know, we had families that, that cared for us and wanted the best for us. And yep. they themselves worked hard so they can provide for us. And, you know, the only, the only place that I could find peace was the football field, the baseball field, the track, right? It's just, this is where the, nothing else matters. It's mm -hmm. just the task at hand. It is the game. It is the race. And, you know, that's where, that was my peace. That's where I felt you, nobody can tell me about my skin color. You know, you can tell me about my result. View me by my work. Because yeah. if I'm going to be around people that carry cultural measuring sticks, I'm yeah. never going to, I'm never going to measure up, you know, and that's why I keep quiet on things. But at, you know, at the same time, I think deeply about stuff and, you know, and my family being, you know, socially active, you know, and, and also being elected officials, yeah. you know, you, you understand, you, you come to understand that, you know, it's not about this. You know, it's about this, you know, it's, it's your work, you know, it's, it's, it's again, that whole thing about being held accountable and everything. So I can't be mad at people that feel that they have to do what they need to do. But at the same time, you know, you know, just, just, you know, deal with the fallout, deal with the outcome, deal with those things, because it's not just enough just to throw your hands up or, you know, make, you know, make a gesture in some way or another, because if you're not working off the field for the people that you say you're representing, then who are you really? Yep. You know, you're taking this opportunity to do yourself and you, and, and you know that there are other people out there that want that do it for themselves, yep. you know, and there's others that are actually genuine about it. There's others that let their, let their, you know, uh, you know, let their performance speak for themselves on the field. Mm -hmm. But then when they're off the field, they're working very, very hard behind the scenes, you know, with community groups and doing everything like that. So yeah. I think it's, it's just, you got to do what you got to do, you know, just, but anything, everything, you, you just, just got to be prepared for what's coming. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that that's fair. That should, that's, that should be fair. And anybody that wants to disparage that, then, what the what's the point of having an opinion about something yeah but what's crazy is we 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 have come this far with we're, we're still having these conversations uh -huh. and it's like you when when is when is this gonna stop <laughs> when no and, and this and this is and, and i think we sometimes at every generation you know we we disparage the past you know there's just portions of these uh, of, of a generation that just you know it's my time it's my time it's my time and they act like the things that they're going through now is the first time anybody's ever gone through them right the only difference that makes them feel that the, the only difference from that is just the technology right if we were listening if we've been paying attention ever since the stories have been told to us we know we we, we'd understand and try to pass it down, right? But we have a segment, there are always going to be a segment of, of a generation that's just, well, you know, you're not really talking to me, right? Yeah. And then they're shocked when they see something that we've already seen in our, pa in, in, in our lifetime. So uh, any final thoughts on that? Is, is there anything that you want to add? Nah, man. No more emotions. I'll save that for Jasmine. All right. So how about before we get to Jasmine, how about we go ahead and, and let's let's talk about some of the things that are coming up. The men's 400 meter hurdles. Big up Mount Vernon. Uh, Rye Benjamin, right? Rye Benjamin. So we got Karsten Warholm. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a battle. It's gonna be a goodie, but I think Rod's gonna come out because he's he's right behind Warholm. And that's what he needed. Lanes is crucial sometimes, man. Yeah, they're five and six. 
the Ryzen Ryzen five, five. Ryzen's right behind him. He be his rapid. But now, now Allison Dos Santos is is outside of Carson. Which is a, and he's so Rossi's both of them. Samba's not. He's he's not a slouch. See that forty six nine eight. And not a, he's not a slouch. There's gonna be a goodie, man. It's, we might see four on the on the forty seven. That would be what the Santos, Dos Santos, Warholm, and, and and Benjamin. And Samba. So we've got that. Um, let's talk about the 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 men's two hundred heat. Ooh, who's the favorite? Who we? They got seven heats. We're not gonna go through all of them. But Mr. Like, Noah Lyles. But then you have a really great story, and I think his name is Knightington, I believe. 17 years old. 17. 17 years old, ran 9, 8, 1984. What? 17? 1984, only 17 years old. 1980. Wow. Young boy, yo. 17? <laughs> only 17. How does that happen? I don't know, man, but... Yo, how come you couldn't do that? Yo, shut up, man. <laughs> I, ain't yeah, I, mean... enough, I ain't taking enough steroids. Oh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> no, I think his dad coaches him, I believe. And who's his dad? I think he's a junior, so I think he might have the same name. Mad. He looks so young. Yo, he, yo oh he's the God. truth, man. Yeah, and his birthday is a couple of days before mine. He's the truth, man. As, as a coach, when you look at him, man, you see him run, you're like, yo, a couple of more years into him, you might see the first one under 19, man. Wow. That is – wow. O- only in the right hands, yo. He, he yeah. Was, yeah. He was, he's raw. Yeah. Like, you can see how raw he is. There was a lot of guys that ran some crazy times when we were in high school, right? Mm-hmm. Like I mean, and in different and in, in different events. Yeah. Um, remember that uh, that Miler? Was he, it was from Virginia. From Virginia. Uh, what's his name? Alan Webb. Alan Webb. He broke. He broke four minutes in the in, four minutes uh-huh. in indoor. Right, and then it was just whatever happened to him. He went on to Michigan, and then he went pro. I mean, his, but yeah, it's and like, he he dealt with injuries and things like that. I mean, is it worth being that fast so young? I mean, so, but you know what it is, Rick, also? Sometimes the college system can also mess you up. That's also true, yeah. So when you put that into a factor, right? And it, this, this, is, this, is, this, this here is a new thing now. Mm-hmm. We're seeing it a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Noah Lyles is another one that we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Right. Straight out of high school, did his thing. Um, Allison Felix was probably one of the first ones to do it, right? Right. But the way that she got groomed is how it should be done. Like she didn't, she didn't come out bursting like her first year mm-hmm. or maybe mm-hmm. a second year. I think she didn't finally hit to like maybe her third or fourth year. And mm-hmm. as you know, it's kind of like when you kind of mature at that point. You know what I mean? Right. Like you start to understand yourself and things like that. Um. So with the right person, man, I hope he does well, man. I, and and. Oh, I hope yeah. they really. I, I hope they really take their time with him. Yeah. Um. Like I said, in the right hands, it could be something special. Um. And you know, because Boat was another one we can even talk about as mm-hmm. far as, but you know, because he he was young, and you know, having a good coach to say, hey, I don't think the four hundred is working out. Maybe you should drop it down mm-hmm. and try it there because I don't think it's gonna, you know, I don't think you're gonna succeed in that. And then, you know, dropping down and all of a sudden, I think his first 100-meter race was like 9-8, um, which was crazy because um, I remember having this conversation with T.J. Um, mm-hmm. about it. Like, it was out of nowhere. I think his fastest time before that was maybe like 10-13 or something like that, 10-08. I don't know. It was something crazy. Doesn't, um, doesn't that out of nowhere sound like somebody we know? I mean. Villanueva running 158 <laughs> and destroying, destroying oh, the more possibility of a Nationals four by man. You know what? Right. Top. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, like it, it, it's all depends on who you with, man, because Boat's coach was a genius. Like even his last year, like 
I always tell people watch Iron Bolt, the last um his last hurrah. Like it gives you a good um understanding of how important a coach is. All right. Well, we have a again, we have a lot to go through. I mean, there's a lot of this is this is where the nitty gritty is coming down. We've got the the talked about the men's 200 meters tomorrow morning. We have very like back to back to back. You got the men's 200 meter semis, then you have the 800 meters women's, and you have the 200 meter um, women's final. So there is a lot of excitement. There's a lot of fun stuff to watch tomorrow morning. So, but um, and we'll get to that the next time we talk, which would be Wednesday. So the episode will come out on Thursday. So, by, and then we'll, from, from there, we'll talk about the men's 400 meter hurdles, but we cannot finish this episode without talking about the queen Weepa. of the 100 meter hurdles, Olympic record holder, Jasmine Camacho Quinn, man. Did you see that race? I did. I, I was in that race, man. She did it for all Puerto Ricans, yo. Damn right. She did it for all Puerto Rico. Before we get to that, man, because I know this that's going to be very – and we kind of sort of touched on stuff like that earlier, but but I mean, like, her, her performance this, this Olympics were, was absolutely dominant. You know, from the heats to the semis – to the she was on another level, and when you look at K- Kendra Harrison, mm-hmm. she was she was right Kenny next Harrison. to her. Yeah. Kenny Harrison. Mm-hmm. You know, you she was right next to her, and it, it, she 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 had to run a, the perfect race. She had to run yeah. perfect, just to stay with just to stay with Jasmine. Mm-hmm. And then you saw she clipped uh, she clipped a couple of um, hurdles. hurdles on the way down. I was she's really also, she's fast. Yeah, I'm supposed to be like I think she runs a good hundred too. Um, she's fast because I think you can see in one of the races um, she slowed down like the last hurdle and chop step because she was going too fast and ended up going over it. Wasn't again, that in the final? I saw. I swear that I, was I, it, it might have been the final. I saw it. I was like, oh snap, Dad, she was flying. You know? Yeah. Megan Tapper, I think, was out in lane, lane, lane eight or something. She was, she was, yeah. she, she looked like she was, she had a, she had a good chance. But yeah. I, I watched her, I watched the race a bunch of times, and I was just fascinated at first, like how tall Jasmine is, and in the way that yeah. she attacks the, the way hurdles. that she attacks her hurdles, it's like she's coming downhill. Yeah, right, because. Usually you want to go like straight over it, you know, like in stride. But she's her, like it's more a step over. Yeah. It's like she's just stepping over. She's like hopping over a bunny, you know. <laughs> but I'm serious. So I mean, and 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 I was thinking about this when 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 I was watching it again this morning, how conscious being that big and like attacking the hurdles that way, don't you like it would have to be, you'd have to be like super, super conscious about your, uh, your, your dragging your leg over yeah. it because it's, a, or, or even just getting your leg high cleared. enough. Yeah. Cleared. Just cleared over, over the, over the hurdle. You know? you know, cause she looked like she was jumping rope. Yeah, man. I mean, a, holy hell. That was a good run. And I felt, I felt that man. My family's like super Puerto Rican. Yeah. Right? Man. And if my, my, my mom and my sister were going, you know, ape shit, watching, you know, uh, three guys in the 800 heats, right? And my sister wasn't feeling well. My mom, my mom went to bed. And it's like, oh, man, if they saw that race, oof. It was so – and it – I mean, like, it was a statement race, too. It was just – I mean, oh, statement race. Oh man, it was just. And then you saw that she, when she took the when she took the podium, she had, and she had the flow de maga in her in her in her hair, the red the red flower, when she took uh, when she received her uh, 
a gold medal, which is, you know, I mean, it's like, um, that's like, uh, gates of heaven open up right there. Yeah. That's like, uh, a symbol that you are, you are with us or you, you're, you're part of us. Mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I said, this, this for me, man. Oh man. I can't, I can't even describe it, man. Like I can't, I think it would have been a lot more crazy if I watched it in person mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. watched it live. I think I had, you know, I had a, I had to, Google it or you know YouTube. It. Oh yeah, you could. So you didn't see it. You didn't see, didn't it, see it live. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, man, um, growing up as uh, uh, you know, African American and um, Boricua, you know, um, I, I've gone, I've gone through some things, man. Um, you know, and I didn't realize it until I got older. Um how much I just wanted to be Puerto Rican. Like, um, there was a lot of things that were done to, you know, to us um, because my dad was black. Um, a lot of things said to us because my dad was black. Um, There's a lot of frustration taken out of us because dad, my dad was black, you know. Um, it was a lot. So for me growing up as, uh, a Puerto Rican, um, I can say that with pride now, right? I can say those things with pride now. Um, there was never a thought in my head to run for the U.S. There was never, not one thought I had in my mind that was like, "Yo, you're gonna go run for the U.S." Never. Um, I did it because I wanted to fit in. I wanted you to tell me just because I don't speak Spanish, I'm not full Puerto Rican. I don't look like you, so I'm not full Puerto Rican. Um, you know, I'm not Puerto Rican because um, your dad is black, that you're not Puerto Rican, you know. Um, for me, this race was, yo, you are Puerto Rican, yo. you are. No matter if you don't speak it, no matter if you don't look it, um, I was raised by a Puerto Rican mother. I was I I I was given those um, those Puerto Rican uh, um, heritage and things like that in me. I, I was getting that. That's all. I was getting filled with those things. So it was just because I don't look like you or I, I don't speak Spanish, don't mean that I'm not with you. I'm just with you. So for me, when I when I when I man when I when I went to Puerto Rico, it was I needed to make this team because I want to fit in. And if I don't, then I'm just going to look like the regular person that I am. And I'm going to continue to go through these things. Um, and after a while, I just, I just, to be honest with you, I stopped. I, I just, I stopped listening to it. Um, I kind of started to believe that I wasn't Puerto Rican. Um, so, you know, man, it, it, it's this, this thing hit me, man. This thing hit me really, really, you know, for the past couple of days, I've been really looking up, you know, things like um, what Puerto Ricans did for the uh, civil rights movement, uh, talking about the Young Lords, um, the Rainbow Coalition, you know, we're talking about those things. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it hit home, man. It hit home. It hit home hard. Um, cause she did it for me, man. She, she ran through the hurdles for me. Um, especially when it's track that, you know, that, that, I think that one made it even more extra special for me, you know, like going to trials, going to where she went for trials, um, being in the same time on phone set and, you know, going through those things. Like I, I felt it, man. I, I felt the, like the victory. You know what I mean, like I felt it. Um, but yeah, man, I was, that was. That was amazing, man. That was, especially, you know, like, you know, I had a big connection with my mom in track and field. And I think that that was more of um, it for me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was there. Like, I did it when she, when she won. My mom always says, 
no matter what you are, where your mother's from, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I've, I have the same, I have the similar, similar feelings that you, that you have about, you know, being treated as an outsider, looked at it, I, I, I looked at it as an outsider. And as much as we, we can say that we're born in this country, you know, just sometimes you just don't, you don't, you don't feel like you're from, you know, right. And, you know, I, I like, you know, being a man from nowhere sucks. Oh man. Who are you telling? And, you know, you try to make do and, 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 and you try to find people that, that, that you could connect with no matter, you know, where they're from. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it, and it ultimately for me, it just became an indictment that I'm not, a, I'm just not accepting the fact that I'm not accepting my family. You know, Malcolm Gladwell has a, has a quote, you know, who you are cannot be separated from where you're from. And so I changed that to who you are cannot be separated from who you're from. Right. Cause you could say whatever you want about me, but you can't take my mother away from me. Yeah. You can't take my grandmothers away from me. You can't take my sister. You can't take my people away from me. And my mm -hmm. people are from that island. My people are also from El Salvador and Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Okay. I go back to the cultural measuring stick that, you know, you're not enough of this or you're not enough of that, but you guess what? You're, mo you're losing an ally. You're losing mm -hmm. somebody that probably you can probably benefit from their work, right? I'm not trying to be in charge. I'm not trying to take over. I'm just trying to be helpful. I just want to, I want to contribute, you know? And if I'm not whatever enough for you, then it's your loss. Mm -hmm. And then that, and, and to tie that into, you know, US track and field, Jasmine is representing Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Homeboy is representing Italy. Mm -hmm. Those are two gold medals that are that the U.S. the U.S. Track and Field Association cannot claim, and I, I feel like these situations. What does that do for people that are trying to make the U.S. team? They're 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 children of immigrants, and they have this opportunity not only to go to the Olympics, but maybe bring back some hardware. What do you, how do you, do you think that's, that trend is going to just going to continue or just going to grow? It's the appreciation. Mm -hmm. It's appreciation of it. Mm -hmm. you, you see how, um, you see how people came out on the streets to Puerto Rico to watch this. You see fa Puerto Rican families going crazy. Like it's the appreciation of it. It's the appreciation of all of it. Um, you don't get appreciated like that here. Like they they not giving you ticket tape parades because you you got a gold medal. Um, it's like you're expected to get a gold medal. Yeah, you're right. You're expected. You know, you're yep. the best in the world. And yep. So, you know, it's, it's it's a it's that it's that like they'll appreciate you more than anything, um, type of thing. And I you know that was that was that was more of, of my you know my decision of, um. Oh, it's, why be a, a soldier in somebody else's army when you can be mm. the general of your own? You know, like, mm -hmm. why would I be, why would I go stay for the U.S. and now be kind of um, following whatever they want to do, you know, behind somebody and then go to Puerto Rico and lead, mm -hmm. lead a team, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that was, that was kind of more of my thinking of it, really. Um, and, you know, pride, man, like. Shit, man, I wanted to be the first Puerto Rican speed skater. <laughs> Man. I thought he was gonna say figure skater. No. <laughs> oh, they're coming down the stretch. Come on, uh -oh. Ra. Come on, Ra. Oh, come on. Go get him. Come on. Oh. Uh, it's coming. Uh, uh, he just got him. Wow. He just got him. Broke him down. Five. Wow. World record 45. 4594. Holy crap. Yo, he went under 46.
Yo. I think on that note, we can end. <laughs> yeah. We can end this. Wow. Holy I, I got, hell. Wow. I, gotta right. let, I gotta let this sink in. <laughs> all right, all right. So you know what? That's a great way to end. Um, we'll talk about we'll talk about the men's 400 hurdles on Wednesday. Um, yeah, man, that was insane. Oh, okay. So, anyways, look, everyone, thank you for for hanging out with us. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. A lot more to talk about. Shout out again to Jasmine. Shout out again. Shout out again to Marcel. Um, and yeah, wow, that race. Okay, peace out, everybody. Yo, he went under 46. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was my last words. Okay. The world record is like, yeah, that's, okay. You know what, look. Okay. Yo, uh, right now, really. yo, I'm, sh I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's amazing. Just oh, now. snap. Yo, they blew out the field there was nobody in sight holy hell yo that was the greatest race i've ever seen all right i'm out of here all right man everybody take care see you Later. on the next one